The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita, as it is. Sixth chapter, text number one, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded in February of 1969 in Los Angeles. Verse number one. The Blessed Lord said, One who is unattached to the fruits of his work, and who works as he is obligated, is in the renounced order of life. And he is the true mystic, not he who lights no fire and performs no work. Purport. In this chapter, the Lord explains that the process of the Eightfold Yoga system is a means to control the mind and senses. However, this is very difficult for people in general to perform, especially in this age of Kali. Although the Eightfold Yoga system is recommended in this chapter, the Lord emphasizes that the process of Karma Yoga <coughs> or acting in Krishna consciousness is better. Everyone acts in this world to maintain his family and their paraphernalia, but no one is working without some self-interest, some personal gratif gratification, be it concentrated or extended. The criterion of perfection is to act in Krishna consciousness and not with a view to enjoying the fruits of work. To act in Krishna consciousness is the duty of every living entity because we are constitutionally parts and parcels of the Supreme. The parts of the body work for the satisfaction of the whole body. The limbs of the body do not act for self-satisfaction but for the satisfaction of the complete whole. Similarly, the living entity acting for satisfaction of the supreme whole and not for personal satisfaction is the perfect sannyasi, the perfect yogi. The sannyasins sometimes artificially think that they have become liberated from all material duties and therefore they cease to perform agnihotra yagna, fire sacrifices. There are some yogas to be performed by everyone for purification. So a sannyasi does not require to perform the yogas. So by stopping that ritualistic performance of yoga, sometimes they think that they are liberated. But actually, unless he comes to the standard platform of Krishna consciousness, there is no question of liberation. But actually, they are so interested because their goal is to become one with the impersonal Brahman. There is demand. The impersonalists, they have got a, one demand that uh, to become a one with the Supreme, impersonal being. But a devotee has no demand. He simply uh, engages himself to serve Krishna for the satisfaction of Krishna. They do not want anything in return. Uh, that is pure devotion. Uh, just like Lord Chaitanya says, Nadhanang Najanangana Sundarim Kavitan Bhajagadi Sakavaya. I do not want any wealth. I do not want any uh, uh, number of followers. I do not want any nice wife. Simply let me be engaged in your service. That's all. That is the Bhakti Yoga system. When Prahlad Maharaj was asked by Lord Nishinga there, my dear boy, uh, you have suffered for me so much, so whatever you want, you ask for. So he refused. Uh, my dear Master, uh, I am not uh, doing mercantile business with you, that I will take some remuneration from you for my service. This is pure divorce. Uh, so yogis are the gaining. They are demanding that uh, they should be become one with the Supreme. Uh, why one with the Supreme? Because they have got bitter experience uh, by the separation of material plans. But a devotee has no such thing. The devotee remains also separate from the Lord. He is 
fully uh, enjoying in the service of uh, the Lord. Right. So this desire is greater than any material desire, but it is not without self-interest. Similarly, the mystic yogi who practices the yoga system with half open eyes, seeking all material activities, desires some satisfaction for his personal self. But the person acting actually the yogi is one of uh, material power. That is the perfection of yoga. Not perfection. That is one of the procedure. Just like if you are actually practicing the regulatory principles of yoga, then you can uh, get uh, eight kinds of perfection. You can become lighter than the cotton swab. You can become uh, heavier than the stone. Uh, and you can get anything, whatever you like, immediately. Ah. Sometimes you can even create a planet. Such powerful yogis are there. Vishamitra, yogi, he did it actually. Ah. He wanted to get man from palm tree. The, why man should be, uh, be begotten through the uh, ten, living ten months within the womb of mother? Uh, they will produce that like fruit. He did it like that. But sometimes yogis are so powerful they can do. Uh, so these are all material powers. Uh, they, such yogis, they are also vanquished. How long you can remain on this material power? Uh, so bhakta yogis, they do not want anything such. Uh, yes. But a person acting in Krishna consciousness works for the satisfaction of the whole without self-interest. A Krishna conscious person has no desire for self-satisfaction. His criterion of success is the satisfaction of Krishna, and thus he is the perfect sannyasi or perfect yogi. Lord Chaitanya, the highest perfectional symbol in Krishna consciousness, prays in this way, O Almighty Lord, I have no desire to accumulate wealth, nor to enjoy beautiful women. Neither do I want any number of followers. What I want only is the causeless mercy of your devotional service in my life, birth after birth. Hmm. So a devotee does not want even salvation. Why Lord Chaitanya says birth after birth? The salvationist, they want to stop. The void is, they want to stop this material uh, way of life. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says birth after birth. That means he, he is prepared to uh, undergo all kinds of material pain, uh, birth after birth. But what he wants, he simply wants to be engaged in the service of the Lord. That is the perfection of I think you can stop. Stop here. Spirit soul is one ten thousand the tip of the hair. In the spiritual sky, is the spirit soul still just that big? Hmm? The spirit soul, when he goes back. To that is his that is his constitutional position. Either in the spiritual sky or in material sky. He is the same. But as you develop in the material world, material body. Similarly, in the spiritual world, you can develop a spiritual body. You follow? Your position is that a small particle, but spirit can expand. Ah, this expansion in the material world is being done in contact with matter. And in the spiritual world, that expansion can be done in spirit. Here, in the material world, I am spirit soul, I am different from this body, because this body is matter, and I am living. I am living force, but this material body is not living force. And in the spiritual world, there is everything living force. 
There is no dead matter. Therefore the body is also spiritual. Just like water with water, water. That's all. But water and oil, distinction. Similarly, I am spirit soul, I am say oil. So I am in the water. So there is distinction. But if I am put into the oil, then everything is oil. So, uh, the impersonalists, they do not develop body. They simply remain as spirit particle. That is their idea. Uh, but we Vaishnava, we want to serve Krishna, therefore you require hands, legs and mouth and tongue and everything. So we are given such body. As we are getting this body, from the womb of the mother. Similarly, we get body in the spiritual world, not from the womb of the mother, but there is process to get, you can get. Yes. Uh, artificially? Uh, this Krishna consciousness practice is uh, turning this material body into spiritual body. Uh, how it is done? The example I have several times given that you put the iron in the fire, the more it is warm, it becomes fire. When the iron is red hot, that means when the iron has acquired the qualities of fire, you touch the iron anywhere, it will act as fire. Similarly, this body, although it is material, there are so many examples that a, a, a metal electrifier the metal is not electricity, but when it is electrified, it touch the metal, you get electric shock immediately. Huh? Just like the electric wire, copper, it is copper, but as soon as it is electrified, you touch it, you get electric shock. Huh? There are so many examples. Similarly, if your body is spiritualized, then there, then the material action is no more. Material action means sense gratification. So the more one becomes spiritualized, the material demands become need. No more material activities. So how you can do that? The same example, you have to keep the iron constantly with the fire. You have to keep yourself constantly in Krishna consciousness. Then even your this body, material body, is spiritualized. Uh, there is a Sanskrit grammatical law which is called moyat, moyat prapa. Moyat means there is a word just like sarno moya. Sarno moya means golden. Golden can be called when it is made of pure gold, that is also golden. And if it is made of something else, but the coating is gold, large quantity of gold, it is also golden. Similarly, when this material body is uh, full with spiritual activities only, this is also spiritual. Therefore, saintly persons, of course, in your country everyone is uh, put into the grave after passing away. But uh, in India, according to Vedic system, only 
very high personality devotees their body is not burnt it is considered spiritual a sannyasi's body is not burnt because it is considered spiritual so how it becomes spiritual the same example when the body has no more no more any material activity simply spiritual activity in krishna consciousness that body is spiritual so if this world is uh, become full in krishna consciousness nobody is working for sense gratification only for satisfaction of krishna this world becomes spiritual or any this requires a little time to understand uh, anything used for krishna simply for krishna satisfaction it is spiritual just like we are using this microphone for talking about krishna then it is spiritual otherwise what is the difference between this prasadam and ordinary food eh? we are distributing prasadam the people will say why there is prasadam the same fruit we eat and you have simply cut into pieces it has become prasadam they can say that how it is prasadam but it is prasadam ah if you are eating this prasadam you become spiritualized actually it is prasadam is simple thing. just like the same example if i if i take that iron hot iron if i say it is fire ah somebody may say oh why why it is fire it is iron i say you touch it these are crude examples but that, that is it when your activities actually in higher sense there is no matter there is no matter everything is spiritual because krishna is spiritual ah uh, krishna is whole spirit and the matter is one of the energy of krishna therefore it is also spirit but because it is being misused not for the purpose of krishna therefore it is meant so our krishna consciousness movement is to spiritualize we spiritualize the whole thing whole social position political position anything uh, it is very nice movement people should try to understand it and if it is actually spiritualize the whole world of course that is not possible but the ideal is like that but I, at least if individually one tries this spiritual re spiritualization method his life becomes perfect yes Yeah. Now, what, how should we determine what what uh, we should uh, determine our? Help them, someone. See, you put yourself under Krishna. That is helping yourself. <laughs> And if you think, oh, I can protect myself, then you are not helping yourself. Just like this finger, so long it is healthy, working. If there is some trouble, I can spend thousands of dollars for this. But if this finger is cut off from my body, uh, if you trample down with your feet this finger, I don't care for it. Similarly, to help oneself means to put your oneself in the proper position. as part and parcel of krishna that is real healthy otherwise how you can help 
the finger can help itself by putting itself in the proper position of the hand and work for the whole body. That is proper position. If the finger thinks that I shall remain separated from this body and help myself, it will die. So as soon as we think that I shall live independently without caring for Krishna, that is my death. And as soon as I engage myself as part and parcel of Krishna, that is my life. So helping oneself means to uh, know one's position and work in that way. That is helping. Uh, without knowing what is his position, how one can help oneself. It is not possible. Yes? Well, you are serving Krishna, that is means you are doing. Serving means doing. What do you mean by serving? Actually, when you serve somebody, are you not doing something? You are engaged in serving Krishna how? You are going to preach Krishna consciousness, you are cooking, you are cleansing, you are somebody doing something. So helping Krishna means doing. Helping Krishna does not mean you sit down tightly. That is Krishna consciousness activities. Whatever asset you have got to work, utilize it for Krishna. That is bhakti. Now we have got what assets we have got? We have got the mind. All right, think of Krishna. We have got this hand, watch the temple, or cook for Krishna. We have got the legs, go to the temple of Krishna. We have got this nose, or oh, smell, the flowers offered to Krishna. So you can engage. So Krishna consciousness engage means working, activity. Arjuna. He was declined to act. A Krishna was infusing ah, to act. This is the whole Bhagavad Gita. A Krishna consciousness does not mean that no work. To engage yourself in Krishna consciousness means to work for Krishna. Krishna does not say, uh, of course, in this chapter, Krishna will say something about He never says, Arjun, oh, my dear friend Arjun, you don't care for this world. You sit down and meditate upon me. Have you seen in the Bhagavad Gita? This meditation means to stop all nonsense work, sit down tightly. But those who are advanced in Krishna consciousness, they have to work for Krishna. That's like ch ch child, simply disturbing the home. Mother says, my dear child, sit down here. But if you can work nicely, or you ask mother, ask my dear boy, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do that. So sit down tightly for the nonsense, not for the sensible. For the nonsense, the more he, he sits down, at least he does not commit any nonsense. That's all. Negation of nonsense. That is not positive. Here is positive activities. So negation is no life. Positive life is life. 
don't do this, is no lie. Do this, this is lie. But you know, to do rightly, there are something, don't. Don't is not lie. Do is lie. All Bhagavad Gita is do. Do fight for me. There is nothing don't. Arjuna wanted and don't induce me. And Krishna did not like that. Uh, you are speaking like non-Aryan. Kuta speak asmalanidam. Anadja. Jishtam. It is this kind of words are spoken by the non-Aryans. He was accused of being non-Aryan. Anarj. So Krishna consciousness does not mean uh, sitting idly. No. Uh, we have the whole pastimes of Krishna's full of activities. When you go to spiritual uh, world, uh, Krishna is always dancing up to twenty-four hours dance there and eat there. Where is sit down? There is no question of sit down. Have you heard anything about gopis meditating? Sit down. <laughs> Have you heard? That Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He said, what is that? Dancing. Hare Krishna. You see? You see, spirit, you are spirit soul, how you can stop yourself? Silent. That is not possible. Arjun refused. When he find in this chapter, when Arjun was recommended, ah, my dear Arjun, you meditate. He immediately refused. My dear Krishna, it is not possible for me. It is not possible for me. That is actual fact. How is it possible for him? He was a householder man. He wanted kingdom. He wanted to rule over the uh, country. How? Where is the time for his uh, meditation? He flatly refused. My dear Krishna, it is not possible for him. He says it's controlling the mind. Vayuriva Sudhuskaram. It is as difficult as to control the air. That is a fact. You have to engage the mind in Krishna. Then it is control. Otherwise, artificial, you cannot control. It is impossible. Arjun said, what to speak of others? Who is Arjun? Personally talking with Krishna. Do you think he is an ordinary man? He said that it is impossible. Vaireva Sudhuskaram. This very example has given. Chanchala himmana Krishna pramathi balavad dhriham. My dear Krishna, you are asking me to control the mind. Uh, uh, it is so powerful that uh, and, uh, and restless, I think to control the mind is as good as to control the air. Uh, if there is high wind, uh, can you control it? He gives this example. You can control the mind when you fix up the mind in Krishna's lotus feet. That's all. No nonsense can come within your mind. Simply Krishna. Uh, that is perfection of meditation. Activities? Recreation? Yes. Uh, dancing? <laughs> Come on, dance with us. Is it not a creation? And when you get tired, take prasadam. Do you want more recreation than this? What is your answer? Is it not a creation? Yes. Why difficult? 
dancing is difficult. Chant and dance. As you can come, anyone can come, everyone is welcome. We don't charge anything for this dancing. You go to ball dance and so many other dances, you pay for it. But we don't charge. We simply, our, these students simply beg something because we have to maintain. We don't charge anything. So if you simply come and dance and for the creation, it is very nice. Everything is there in Krishna consciousness. We want music, uh, there is music, you want dancing, there is music, dan- uh, dancing. Uh, you can bring nice musical instruments, you can join. Uh, we distribute nice palatable dishes. So, practically this is a system of recreation only. <laughs> yes. If you seriously think, you'll find this system, there is no level at all, simply recreation. Huh? Susukham. Ah, that is stated in the Bhagavad Gita in the ninth chapter, you find Susukham. Everything is pleasing and happy. Find out anything in our system that this is troublesome. Tell me practically, anyone. So this point is very troublesome. Just put your counter-argument. Huh? Simply pleasing. It is simply the creation. That's all. You just point out, Swamiji, your, this, this, this point is not very the creation or very, not very unhappy person. Nothing. Huh? People want. That is their nature, just like the children. Uh, when they see that boys and girls are dancing, uh, their children are also dancing, automatically. This is spontaneous. This is life. And that is our real life in the spiritual world. Uh, there is no anxiety. Simple people are dancing and chanting and eating nicely, that's all. There is no factory. There is no labor. Uh, there is no technical institution. There is no need. This is, these are all artificial. Ananda Maya Vyasat, the Vedanta says, the, every living entity, God is Ananda Maya, full of breeze and pleasure, and we are part and parcel of God, we are also. The same quality. Ananda Maya Vyasat. So, our whole process is to join the Supreme Anandama, Krishna, uh, in his dance party. That will make us actually happy. Here we are trying to be happy by artificial means. Uh, and we are becoming frustrated. Uh, but if we actually be situated in Krishna consciousness, simply you Revive your original position, joyful, simply joyful. Anandamaya Vyasa, these are the Vedanta terms. Because our nature is Anandama. People are, everyone is trying to find out. In this last Viniga, I mean, you know, there are so many restaurants, so many things, and so many signs, but what? They are advertising, come on, here is Ananda, here is pleasure. He is advertising here, we are also doing. Like that, here is Ananda. So everyone is searching after Ananda, pleasure. But there is different standard of pleasure. The same thing, somebody is trying to place, find out pleasure from the material point of view. Somebody is trying to find pleasure from speculation, philosophy, poetry, or art. And somebody is trying to find out pleasure in the transcendental state. Everyone is trying to find out pleasure. That is our business only. Why you are working so hard day and night? Because you know at night I shall mix with that girl or I shall mix with my wife or I shall enjoy. The whole 
everyone is accepting all kinds of trouble to find out that pleasure. Pleasure is the ultimate goal. But we do not know where is the pleasure. Uh, that is the illusion. A real pleasure is in the transcendental form with Krishna. Uh, we'll find uh, Krishna all as jolly. Uh, you draw so many pictures, you see. And if you join, you become jolly. Yes, Have you seen any picture of Krishna is working with machine? He is machine. <laughs> Oh, have you seen any picture? He is mocking. <laughs> By nature, pleasure, you see. Pleasure. So you have to unfold yourself, unfold yourself in that way, and you find pleasure. Simply full of pleasure, that's all. Anandamay Vyasar. By nature, simply pleasure. Not by artificial means. <coughs> Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Pratibhavita Bhi. In the Brahma Sangha, I find. Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Pratibhavita Bhi. Stavi Jai Vani Rupa Tayatala Bhi. Goloka Ivani Vasatya Silatma Bhuta. Govinda Madhiparasam Tamang Bhajami. Ananda Chinmaya Rasa. Rasa means uh, the test, the mellow. Just like we uh, try to test a sweet meat, a sweet candy, as anything. Why? Because there is a very nice test. Uh, so everyone is trying to have some test from everything. We want to enjoy sex life. If there is some test. So that is called Adi, test. So there are so many tests. Yet, in the Brahma Sangha, there is Ananda Chinamaya Rasa. That test, material test, he may test it, but it will be finished in Egypt. Immediate, finished. Just a few minutes. Suppose you have got very nice sweet meat. You taste it. You get, oh, it is very nice. Or take another. All right. And another, no, I don't want. Finished. Is it? So material test is finishable. Uh, it is not uh, limit, unlimited, but a real test is unlimited. Uh, if you test one, then you cannot find it. It will go on, go on, increasing, increasing. Anandam uh, Buddhanam. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that this test is simply increasing. It is, although it is ocean like, Great. Still it is increasing. Here you have seen ocean. It is limited. Your Pacific Ocean is tossing. But it is not increasing. If it increases, then you have a. But by nature's law, by God's order, it does not come uh, beyond its limit. Uh, within the limit it is. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that there is an ocean of bliss, ocean of test of transcendental bliss, which is increasing. Anandamudhi uh, vardhanam pratipadam purnamita sadhanam sarvatma samanam parang vijayati sri krishna sangeetanam. You will get by this chanting Hare Krishna, your pleasure potency increasing more and more, more and more. Yes, what is your question? Hmm? Yes, yes. In, even in the atom. Oh, yes. Wherever he lives, he lives in his own paraphernalia. Anur Niyan Mahato Mahiyan, he is the biggest than the biggest, and he is the smallest than the smallest. That is Vishnu. Anantarastang Paramanu Chayantarastang. Paramanu means atom. 
We cannot see even the atom. How small he is within that atom. It's everywhere. How can you tell to wherever Krishna is, that is without, as well as going, uh, um, if Krishna is present within our heart, does that mean within our heart? Yes, one has realized he is living in Vrindavan, anywhere. He realized soul is always living in Vrindavan. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has said. Huh? One has realized Krishna. Then he is always living in Vindava. He is nowhere. Just like Krishna or Vishnu is living everyone's heart. But he is living in the dog's heart also. Does it mean that he is Dagis? He is living in Vaikuntha. Although he is living in the dog's heart, but he is living in Vaikuntha. Similarly, a devotee may seem to be living in some place which is Oh, far from Vrindavan, but he is living in Vrindavan. That's the fact. 